This is not the kind of city you show up at and start asking mysterious questions. Not if you want to, you know, not disappear in the night on the ice flows. Natural causes, they'll say. You don't know us. That's that low no, crime rate. Know you. <laughs> hey, we, if I am lucky, I will not find you tomorrow morning. Oh, we know we're going to get in trouble. We may as well, you know. Yeah. Nah. Is you just nice to a guardsman that you are here to start trouble? No, I said we're going to get trouble. It's going to get in trouble. It's going to come find us. I don't understand the difference. Yeah, okay. Stay out of trouble, <laughs> then. Will do. Move along, move along. I think I fucking nailed that shit. I'm practicing my Icelandic, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what time is it now? Six o'clock in the afternoon. We should probably find it in. Anybody want to go to the You're jade quarter? Back to the caravan, he said, leave back. I mean, I think we said. I think we said. Sandrew we Vishki gonna... said not to go Distance. back to the caravan and sleep with the I caravan. Do everything Sandrew says then. <clears throat> I mean, mm, it's already late. We have, a long we have our. Of to Sandrew. It's already late. We have our bedrolls at the caravan. We could probably it... check into an inn first thing tomorrow morning. Does anybody have knowledge religion in our party? Yes. Um, let me see. I picked up some knowledges. I have knowledge oh. arcana. How knowledgeable are you about religion, Smith? With uh, with my two ranks, my modifier is one. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's probably reasonable that I don't consider you an expert on Ioma Day and lore. Well, nope. I think he's been reading the Ioma Day and Acts, right? So he mm -hmm. might know the major acts, but nothing like, you know. Okay. I've got them written out in front of me, but my memory of them just doesn't seem to take. So yeah, I mean, if you talk about the Black Prince, he's going to be like, yep, sacked himself, bro. But if you're like, now, when Ioma Day was debating liturgical processes with Aron, he's going to be like glazing over his eyes. Right, okay. Uh, then I would probably want to go talk to Koya, because I she's the person that I've been talking to about my visions, and now that there's things that have changed with us being potential prophets, I would want to talk to her. Because she's the most knowledgeable prophets. religious scholar that we know. Maybe not prophets, chosen ones. But yeah, I left my disguise kit with the caravan, and I kind of need to get this thing off before one more Alphan man stares at me. Let me ask, what do you look like with your disguise on? And do you have a name when you're disguised? <laughs> I just uh, wanna so um I think this is a move from Dungeon World, the same system you had the bonds from. But one of the ways to earn XP was to establish a new identity or alter ego. So I feel like we should learn more about this alter ego just in case you pull it back out of the you know, disguise kit in the future. Well, I definitely kept my same height of 5'9", so I'd probably go for the more statuesque stunner look. Okay. You know, a little bit taller. Not necessarily full of... Just end. Are you okay? You gotta start cracking up? <laughs> you're on the verge. He literally said statuesque stunner and you started giggling, so... I was just wondering if his disguise kit has a waxing kit in it or not. <laughs> it definitely does. That mustache... Actually... No, I was thinking how much thigh are you showing. Oh. <laughs> and did it's you the middle of in winter. Advance? So. <laughs> it's the middle of winter, not that much thigh. <laughs> Sorry. It's not the middle of winter, but it's cold. Right. It's actually the middle of like, spring, so... It's a good uh, land, a hard land there. Uh, Sorry. You gotta take comfort where you can get it. <laughs> I think my name for this alter ego... <laughs> it's definitely gonna be an A name. I don't know. Because I want to keep it relatively simple. Not necessarily just call him Julie. Amy with a I M E. Maybe an oolong over one of those. The, there you go. Give him the orphan on. 
How about a me? Ariadne. <laughs> yeah, that's awful simple. <laughs> Ariadne. What ethnicity are you pretending to be? <clears throat> oh, Verizian, duh. Okay, all right. So you makes like, it. Yeah, you look like a southerner. Pretty like because I am Verizian, and that makes it a little bit simpler. Okay, all right. all right. I think I have a decent. And what was the name again that you settled on? What was that, David? Ariadne. Ariadne. I like that one. Write it down. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, where are you guys headed? You've you've left the steak shop <clears throat> and the stench of uh, desperate we behind you. We still need to scare. <laughs> <laughs> we need to scare ourselves up a uh, city guide. We're bumbling around here, banging into stuff and doing all kind of crap we're not supposed to. So. That was one of our first suggestions was get a guide. The guide wasn't for the city in particular, but to guide the caravan over the crown of the world. Oh, I thought they wanted us one to have one while we were here. Okay. No, no, but that would be a good idea given how yeah. you guys have gone about Seems how we Yeah, exactly. Seems how we've already kind of okay. pooched this mess. You need a lovable street urchin. There you go. <laughs> Just to hear Arthur's voice for him. Totally trustworthy. My name is Toffet. <laughs> uh, I, I, I work for a half pence a day. Yes. Five coppers. I'll wow. get you to where you need to go then. Yep. Lovable street urchin, Toffet. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to be a bard. And I'm going to grow up and be a scald. <laughs> then I'm going to tell lots of stories and everyone will think I'm great. Everyone loves bards. <laughs> I feel like he's turning into Australian for some reason. Yeah, why did he turn say. Australian all of a sudden? He's shifting. <laughs> now I find it. Jesus. Okay, so what's the what? What are you doing then? Before you head back to the caravan, you've questioned the guards. What's the plan now? Hire that. I mean, there's person. there's like unions for this thing. In the ivory quarter and the jade quarter, where you can just go and ask people, like, I'd like a guide. Oh, hmm. okay. We could probably get there bright and early during, you know, normal resistance hours. But for now, I guess we can go back to the caravan. I can get the Ariadne disguise off, and we can... Yeah. Okay, you, you, uh, you make it back to the caravan, then. No one has anything else they'd like to do before, before you get there? Don't think so. Think of. Okay, so uh, as you're approaching the caravan, you might have some... I'll just tell you what you see. There's a giant signpost outside that says, like, Caravan of Amitatsu Emeko and her traveling imperial court in, like, <laughs> huge blood-red letters on, like, a black background. Oh, yeah, I broadcast that to everybody then. What? Yeah, there's, like, onlookers who's come to see it, and there's, like, people walking through the caravan. Now, of course, there's guards on duty, like Sandru and Dutraka and Kelda Oxgutter. But, you know, people are, like, walking through and speaking. You can see a very upset Shalalu, uh, who is more stone-faced than normal, is talking <laughs> to some people, wearing a ridiculous-looking Asian outfit. And uh, there's, like, the Verizian Asian mix of Koya, who's got like seven different colored silks on. She somehow managed to make Asian clothes still look like a Verizian just by wearing lots of colors. <laughs> so it's not that much different for her. And she's got on, you know, some sort of like things through her long, super long hair. She's got like chopsticks and weird braids. It's like asymmetrical hairstyle. Mm. So, like, there's a long braid down one side and, like, the Olfen Manor, and then there's, like, chopstick tear. And... <sighs> Empress Ameko is, like, in the middle of it all in ruby red silks, and it's like, hello, hello, I'm Ameko Kaijutsu Amatatsu. And that's the scene you guys come on to. I, I, I can start to understand why Sandrew wanted us to keep away. No kidding. <laughs> So much for low profile. Yeah, so really. When you I guys thought... like say that, Sandrew shows up and he's like, "Thank God you guys are here. We need <laughs> help. I'll make who the fuck is this? 
He's like pointing toward Eridos. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I put a put a finger on my mustache and just just say hello. He's like, oh wow, you really committed to that character, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was thinking of making you my next wife. <laughs> No, I'm actually. My brother is always on the lookout for his next ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he slaps you on the back when you say that. He's like, "Oh, you've got me, Peg Smith." Uh, but seriously, this is no laughing matter. Amiko has gone freaking crazy. I did not have a problem with announcing who we were, but she is bringing people into the caravan circle. It's not safe anymore. It's not safe. Oh, and Shalalu and Koya had a fucking meltdown. It's been a bad day here. Hopefully you'll have some sense to talk to her. Apparently, some mercenaries showed up and were claiming to be the Imperial Court in, throughout the city. They, like, called themselves the Imperial Court, and as soon as Emeko heard that, she knew immediately she had to counter that rumor by becoming the actual Imperial Court. I mean, uh, just rumors in Kalsgard, who cares as long as we get the throne in the end really she's like she cares she cares quite a bit Look but, at her. and she's yep. like she looks very happy like taking people's hands and like kissing babies and just like there's lots of men wearing gold armbands with a silver ring at the top of them that indicate that rather than these being <laughs> oath rings this is the person who gives the oath rings so it seems like there's a lot of chiefs here coming to speak with her but you are right. Being in the caravan circle, it is not safe. Let me get uh, this. Uh, let me get this Agug disguise off. A go, is gonna go stand behind her chair, to the side. Let me go get the, this, this disguise off. Maybe I can talk some sense into her. Okay. Um. Can you? Do you have knowledge of religion, a Uh. No. No. Not at all. Okay. Uh. Can you just roll a d twenty? Let's see if you can nail it ten or higher. Come on, baby. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty obvious to you, perhaps not so much to anybody else, but to you specifically, that there are a number of Robogog worshippers in this crowd here. They've all got, and I don't want to stereotype them, but the worship of Robogog specifically calls for people to be like dirty and long, lanky hair and wearing strangely dyed robes and eye colors. So it's pretty obvious that these guys are definitely Robogog worshippers, to you specifically. All right. And they're um, just, it, none of them are doing anything unusual. They're mixed in with the crowd, and they just seem to be like average, normal people to just to the, to the rest of you. None of them are, um, you know, holding swords made of fire and stabbing anybody. Uh, is there, I, I guess I could just greet them with something they would recognize, one of the, um, Valor one, of the, one of the terms, you oh, know. Oh yeah, there's probably like okay. a yeah, I mean, secret code phrase that you guys Yeah, use. I was actually going to take another linguistics and uh, get secret language, uh, religious so that I can you actually make use up, it. You want to have there be a secret language of whatever. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. I'm not saying there is a secret language. Enough of the knowledge of the inner workings that I could make myself known. Not like a, I think bluff would cover this. Passing a secret uh, message. I'm. I, uh, yeah. You're not good at bluff. No, I suck at bluff. And I'm not. I'm not trying to really. Uh, You're not. It's not trying to bluff it's just part of the bluff skill is passing secret messages that's how the game okay. mechanic works. yeah because well, you're not trying to bluff them but you are trying to sort of bluff everybody else pass it off yeah okay yeah that's probably a good call okay well uh anyway i will try to uh try to let them know without being ridiculously stupid obvious about it so i guess i will do a bluff this is bad this is just so bad <laughs> Yeah, why am I not remotely surprised? <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up? <laughs> That's it. 
Uh, wow. Okay, subtlety is not a Gug strong suit, okay? Just, you know, just saying. I think we have established that. <sighs> All right. Let's see how bad this gets. <clears throat> anyway, he's going to stay behind um, Ameko's chair. Okay. All right. Out of curiosity, and now I'm at, that I'm out of the disguise, what was uh, the result of the roll last week? To see if you were disguised? Yeah. Bad. Bad? <laughs> really bad. <laughs> Your disguise was pretty decent, and people's perception checks were bad. All right. Just wanted to know if I, like, nailed it with 30 or eh, whatever. Anyway, now that I'm out of the disguise, I'm probably going to talk to Emeko and say, Hi, Emeko. What's going on here? So, like, you try to approach her and say something, and she kind of, like, politely waves you off while she's talking to two Jarls. Okay. Get up. I guess wait for her to be done with the Jarls, unless... Okay. Like, uh, she's, like, mingling at a party, right? No, she's, like, sitting she's on a sitting. chair. Yeah. And people are coming to her. You know what? I guess I should introduce myself by my new title, then, shouldn't I? If these are respected well, think, dignitaries and rulers. Well, I think she just doesn't want to be interrupted right now was the, was the intent. I'm looking what? at a gug if he's back with us. And I'm saying... No, I'm standing behind the chair. Behind he's he's going to stay beside Amako while all these people are here. Okay. Jeff won't get this, so Eridos is busy, so I keep my mouth shut. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, what are you doing? Really not that doing anything. Mm. Um, well, this is all quite the surprise. Where's Koya? Um, Koya is off to one side, like, uh, speaking with a number of elderly Scythe Kona. They're, like, spellcasting witches of, uh, the Linorn King. So they're not, like, ice witches of the, uh, Irisen. They're, like, hedge witches. They're not actual witch right. class. They're, like, adepts and healers. Shamans and such. <clears throat> I would wait for a moment and then try and take her aside and talk to her. Okay, so I think that probably is going to resolve first. I think when the Scythe Kona see you approaching, many of them, like, look at you. Can you make a sense motive check? Sure. Come try on, you in lie detector. Oh, that's not terrible. So, 17. Yeah, so a number of them are looking at you... And they all start, like, pointing at you and then nodding and backing away. Like, as you approach, they all stay the exact same distance from you and are backing away, keeping eye contact with you. And then when you start speaking with Koya, they kind of disappear. Okay. Into the, the background of the scene. And Koya is like, oh, Jaff, <clears throat> I see that you're here. <laughs> Indeed I am. Um... I wanted to talk to you about some things that happened in town. Perhaps we could um, uh, retire to someplace more private. He says, come inside my caravan cabin. Dingy. She like, <laughs> right. open her you know, fortune teller's wagon. And she's like, would you like a sandwich? I always used to make them for my son. <laughs> I do like a sandwich. He's like, I got a nice turkey rye that I can uh, make for you real quick here. Got some stuff. Yeah, sounds delicious. Sure, while you're making that, let me tell you about what happened. All right, she's, like, got ice pickles on there. And... <laughs> ice pickles. All right, so I want to give her the rundown of everything that happened in town, but specifically the part that happened at the Temple of Iomite. Okay, so she's like, this is very troublesome, very troublesome indeed. Uh, I don't know that prophecy has worked, but the fact that your prophecy... Is coming true well it's almost enough to make me think about converting I just this is fantastic news that 
you know, it hasn't hasn't worked since a rodent died. You know, it's been several hundred years since there have been any true prophecies. They, you know, I read some Pathfinder Society, you know, <laughs> chat books. Say, hey, why are you? What are you laughing about? They're a serious organization. They are a serious. They gathered organization. a number of prophecies from the Northlands that talked about like the December at all being wiped out sometime around now. That hasn't happened. You know, the shadow rising, the world wound will consume everything, but none of those things have come to pass because the prophecies don't work. So if you're part of a new wave of actually working prophecy, it's a pretty big deal. I just, I'm wondering, you know, Almade seems to have blessed you specifically, you know, is the prophecy involving Eridos and Smith, is that a real one or is it a fake one? I mean, it sounds like it came from a while ago. I just, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they intersect either. I was hoping you might have some insight. It's, so, like I, <clears throat> it's not my day. area of expertise. As you know, Desna likes to send dreams to people. And she, you know, there's sometimes the sm small visions of the future, but nothing like this. All right. Hey, give me one second. Yep. All right. I think we're going to cut sideways back to Eridos trying to speak with Mako. So the Jarls, like, they leave and they kind of, like, clap each other on the shoulders. They walk away. And you hear two of them, like, speaking in Halit. Do you speak Halit, Eridos? I do not. Okay, so they say something in Halit and start laughing. And Mako kind of, like, taps her finger on the throne and looks pretty displeased. And uh, right. she kind of waves you to approach, like, in front of the next person in line. Negotiations did not go as planned then. He says, the negotiations were fine. It was their appraisal of my body as they walked away that was annoying. Oh, well. The men in this land are quite rude. <laughs> You're telling me. Um. <laughs> uh, Wait, is a I had... within ear reach of this conversation? Oh, yeah. You're standing behind the throne. You're telling um. me. <clears throat> oh, He'll oh, step man. up. He'll step up beside Amako and uh, drop his sword hilt into his hand and uh, just look at her, raise an eyebrow. <laughs> how badly like, do no, you? How badly do you even... need these men? She's like, what? <laughs> uh, fairly badly. We need some support here. Like, uh, you're right. you're telling me about the men in this land. He'll uh, step back. It is a long story that I will tell you later, but it mostly involves uh, Garoon Firehair and Toka e. Cook and my penchant for disguise. I'll tell you the specifics later, but uh, what is all this? She actually looks kind of excited when you say this. She says, sounds like a good song that I could write. Maybe something to put to a shamisen in my spare time? Maybe. She says, well... I heard that there was some mercenary group calling themselves the Imperial Court wandering around town around the Iomedin Temple. I felt like it was time to to put the rumors to rest. They were spreading pretty quickly throughout the town, so... It... I know I arranged this without the rest of you, but I felt like it was important that I be seen and heard quickly and raise support for our expedition across the Crown of the North. Of course, and we're going to need all the support we can, but is it really the best idea to have people so close to the wagons? Perhaps we can fi figure out a uh, neutral venue for something like this. She says, you know, you sound so much like, like Sandra right now, which is surprising since I understand the two of you don't get along very well. Ah, uh, we have our moments. What are your thoughts, then? And she turns back and looks at uh, Gug. Uh, thoughts regarding support? She's, she's just like, eh. support this venue, who to let in, how and why. Um, Preferably, I think it's... you don't <clears throat> injure any of the Jarls. <laughs> you don't want to get any, what's the term, that'll, any wear that'll... guild while we're here? <laughs> That'll, that'll probably get a chuckle out of him, for sure. Um, 
I, I, Gug will say that he thinks it is extremely dangerous and that um, we should be much more careful. However, we can manage that with this many people stumbling around. So she's just kind of like... Write down any ideas you have for me, and I'll go over them in the morning before we set up for tomorrow's audience. Very well. And she turns to Eridos and says, Yes, anything you have as well, Eridos. I'm trying to think of some sick burn she could say that would, like, May, like indicate that she still believes that you're a child and like your opinion probably isn't worth as much. <laughs> Nothing comes to no. mind immediately though, but insert something in here that would, you know, she's just like, oh, something about you being a teenager. I don't know. <laughs> something about me being a teenager. Yeah, she's like, I don't want to devalue your opinion. Anything you have to offer from the, you know, the younger years... I know you don't have much experience in this or any subject, but anything you have to offer could be useful. Could always use a fresh pair of eyes. I wish I could come up with the sick burn, but I feel like your eyes sick. are about as fresh as they come. Oh, there oh. We go. oh, counter stroke right there. <laughs> yeah. All right, I walked um, right into that one. Is it? Who was it? Olga or Helga? That's with us. Kelda. 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 Oxcutter. Kelda. I'm gonna. She said she's get... from here, right? Yes. yes. Oxcutter. Brilliant. I'm gonna... She has a clan here. Remember we I... talked to them, right? We have our guide. Let's I'm going to call her and Sandrew over and say, should we be thinking about beefing up some security? Kelda's like. Security, huh? I could have a few cousins out here. Um, Loki, that's one Loki, option. Loki, Loki, Pokey, <laughs> Blinky. Those are not real names. <laughs> um, I don't know a lot about Rizia, but I'm pretty sure there's not one. There's no. Are you mocking yeah. the way that we have names that rhyme? You should know my grandmother really loved rhyming names. I'm called Kelda. I have a sister named Welda. Esmeralda. Esmeralda sounds like a Parisian name. He's like, eh. My father, he was a reaver. He got a lot of travel. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh. what kind of travel. Yeah, travel. For? I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch any of that, Smith. What kind of recompense would your cousins be looking for? She's like, you helped me get out of jail when I was being held by a murderous ogre man. They do not need any recompense. This is paying the work guild. Sounds good. I will have my five cousins here tomorrow, and they will uh, look big and imposing and keep men from getting too close. All right. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we cut back to uh, Joff if he has anything else he'd like to add on the prophecy. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, if, um, if she's convinced that this is all legit, which it sounds like she is and it sounds like I am, then I would definitely want to talk to Smith and Eridos at the next available convenience. But um, it's more just to relay the significance of what's going on. Um, okay. I. I would just want to impress upon them that I truly believe that Ioma Day is, is speaking to us and that we should endeavor to listen to her in whatever form she takes. Okay. And then I'm back with the group, ready to do whatever. All right, so what is the group doing? Well, it's the evening, right? Yep. Suppose we could mingle. There's still plenty of guests here, and we are part of the Imperial well, when Court. when the sun goes down, the guests start disappearing as the temperature rapidly drops. Yeah, let's uh, let's get into bed, then. 
Or get around the fire or something. Mr. Mingle. Yeah. Okay. Mrs. Mingle on occasion. <laughs> oh, God. So I think oh, the attitude really? around the campfire right now is pretty forced. Um, like, Sandro and Duchaka on one side of the fire are staring at Koya and Shalalu on the other side, and they both seem pretty pissed at each other. Oh, dear. This mm. is... This is not looking good. Let's Smith to... goes to Ameko and uh, says, uh, Milady, perhaps a performance would help to raise spirits. She says, I was thinking just the thing. And she starts singing the song of Eridos. <laughs> song of the cross dressing Eridos? Yes. Oh, I imagine I, I filled her in. That specifically. I'm, I think I filled her in on all the relevant details. I like think after it people started that. Eridos in the two sided outfit. Yeah. All right. And she tells the story of Eridos, and it's like a comical light tune with like a jaunty rhyme, and then it gets to the part about uh, the steakhouse, and it becomes just nothing but like four <laughs> lines of limericks. So, no, so it's like a limerick, but there's four separate ones that all end in um, the guy trying to hit on you. <laughs> and by the end of it everyone seems to have calmed down quite a bit and Ameko is like thank you Smith I think that's exactly what we needed so I guess a Gug will go over and talk to the other group and uh, try to feel them out for what they're so upset about if it's just the fact that which other group she, the, I mean, the two groups are angry at each other well that's what I mean if he's talking to Ameko Ameko's not in either group Oh, it's, okay. Say, I'm going to talk to Sandro and Duchaka, see what... Okay. okay. As you're walking over, Sandro points at you and says something in Venarin, and Duchaka's like, ooh, ooh, ah, ha, ha, ooh, ooh, ah, ha, 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 he's like, oh, Dewey, you're so right. <laughs> ah, Eridos, what can I do for you? <laughs> I imagine you just shared a joke at my expense. He says... Yes, indeed. Duchaka had some questions as to uh, where you stashed your valuables. <laughs> <laughs> Trade secrets, my friend. Uh, I am a master merchant. <laughs> Not that kind of trade. What has you so down? He says, other ah, than, yes, well... Other than our profile escalating higher than the crown of the world. Speaking of valuables, Shalalu almost put an arrow shaft into one of mine. <laughs> he was rather upset about the whole Emeko situation today. Hmm. I have never seen her so angry. It is understandable. It's safer to maintain. It's easier to maintain safety with a low profile. I think it is the cold. Also, everything else. But she's <laughs> never so actually that? had to survive anything but Frisian winters. As old as she is, she has not traveled much. You think the cold is making her cranky? I think the cold is making her irritated. Cranky is not the word I would ascribe to her. Eh. Perhaps she woke up on the wrong side of the trance. <laughs> <laughs> but what... Hmm. She seriously tried to put an arrow in one of your valuables? Do Chaka is like... <laughs> And, like, Sandra, like, puts a hand on his head and, like, scratches behind his ears and is like, That's right, Dewey. That's right. What? He's like, oh, no, nothing. It's an inside joke. <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> okay, so I, know why she... so I know why she... There it is. Oh, my gosh. Eridos, the... De facto face of the party. Floundering. Be floundering, being made fun of because he doesn't speak Venarin. Sounds like something you should be perhaps uh, fixing in the future, maybe. Uh, more points in the linguistics? Hey, listen, you want to be in on the inside jokes? That's right. You gotta see 3PO. 
All I'm saying is five million forms of communication. So you're saying I should get tongues permanent. put all the skill points in. Five million. So you're <laughs> saying I should get tongues permanence as soon as I can. I don't know that I'm going to allow permanency. Oh. I'm just saying that wreck rises the rune lord. So everyone's like, I'm getting permanent reduced person. <laughs> then everyone else is like, I'm getting permanent enlarged person. <laughs> That's not. I think I was the only permanent. Like, fit but... anywhere. They were like, I'm so small, I get stabbed to death easily. And the other guy is like, I'm so big, I can't fit in these tiny cuddles. <laughs> I don't think you can permanent those spells though. Oh, you can, friend. You can, and it was. I mean. Permanencing utility spells like Tongues or Arcane Sight, that's one thing. <laughs> 2,500 gold pieces. Got, do you have any other wizard. questions for... Uh... I mean, I understand why Shalala is upset. I just want to know what the overall type of, like, why is Koya upset? Why is he upset? Other than, oh, you know... So he goes, he goes back over... Uh, uh, we'll show don't tell this one okay so he's like ah yes well koya is upset because Ameko is putting herself out there possibly into harm's way and mm -hmm. shalalu is upset because no one is listening to her and there are strange people walking inside the caravan's defense lines and you are upset because he... strange people are walking in the caravan defense lines so that is the main issue there is nothing deeper than that koya all right doesn't care about that I think you are trying to simplify a very complicated issue. Baby steps. The journey of a thousand miles begins with what, but one single step. Well, maybe if you're, you know, a donkey. <laughs> I tend to ride wagons for a living. <laughs> this is like Eridos take him to a burn ward night. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna step away and talk to Smith. All right, Smith. Well, are you, are you just like sitting there watching this, and then Eridos <laughs> approaches you, or were you doing something else before you came over? Um, I don't have. There was nothing else I was particularly planning to do. Okay. But as Eridos walks up, I will say to him, Eridos, remember when I didn't want to put a banner on the wagon because I thought it would attract too much attention? Yes, I remember it well. I believe I was right there with you with that decision. <sighs> That didn't work out. Not working out too well. Could have been a mobile advertising team. <laughs> In Vendor's General Store, I believe it was. That's yeah, it. Yeah, now we're a mobile traveling circus. <laughs> so true. Royal Circus, though. Got uh, the Queen's writ, baby. Elephants or dragons, it makes no difference. A circus is a circus. No, we're Cirque du Soleil. We have no animals anymore. Oh. Womp womp. So do you have something to say to Smith, or are we cutting... Yeah, I'm just gonna tell Smith, like, maybe you should talk to Shalalu. She seems more isolated than usual. And I know how much you two get along. I suppose. And... Are you are you coming, or am I going by myself? Or eh, I'll be around. <laughs> uh, if you're going to talk to Shalalu, I'd be happy to help. She and I have some history. After all right. All. I feel like this is we're, we're in for like a '90s club scene <laughs> situation, where like the two of you are like in suits trying to approach the girl, <laughs> and you're like, "All right, you you like, you, like put a hand." On uh, Joff's chest, and you're like, be my wingman. He's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know that girl. Can I slide into the booth with my arm around her? Yeah, as soon as you do, she like picks the arm up and puts it down <laughs> at your side. <laughs> but yeah, you, you guys move over to speak to Shalalu. She looks absolutely miserable. Her hair is like completely undone. She looks like her eyes are red and puffy. Her fists are both like white. And she's gripping her hands really tightly. <laughs> Apparently someone's <laughs> queuing up what is love in the audience. I was, that would have been a perfect song to be going in that club scene. 
I was waiting nice. to make a night at the Roxbury crack. Oh good. Um, okay. What was I gonna say? Um, I was did... gonna let Smith field this one alone, but if he was so insistent on a wingman, Jeff no, was... no, no, he's got Joff with him. Yeah, Joff's a nut. Joff's a good wingman. Whatever. Joff's yeah, because whenever wingman. you need a wingman, you bring a priest with you. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you guys want to get married? Hey. All right. Well, so it's not competition. <sighs> also true. Um, I say to Shilalu, did did Kelga Kel, Kelda or uh, Sandrew tell you we're we're bringing in some of her cousins for added security? It's like the the security doesn't matter. The security is bad, but we should not be doing this in the first place. She's like running her fingers through her hair. She's like this this is bad. We should not be... We should have kept our location secret. There's no... There's no putting... It's not. This is not like the seal. We can't just put it in the box. Now that people know where we are, they can track us. I know. I'm a tracker. <clears throat> if there are people trying to kill us, and there are, they know exactly where we are, and we're not going to be able to evade them at this point. Those seems like very real concerns that we should have. What do you suggest we do? She's like, I I have no suggestions. We're almost certainly going to die. I Well, at least we'll have four or five other cousins to die before us. We do have a uh, a skilled uh, thief in our party and he's already disguised himself successfully. Perhaps if you're worried about an immediate threat, we could set up some puppets in our place. She's like, immediate, non-immediate, what What does it matter? There are people, very powerful people, a world away, trying to kill us, and they probably know exactly where we are right now. We've announced our presence. Wouldn't we have had to announce our and presence we are eventually? In, yes, but we're in a town full of mercenaries and people who don't like us. Who will kill us for money? Bad. Well, at least at least there's no like <laughs> teleport postal service net yet. He's like, yes, but you aren't in this conversation. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Smith. Smith knows nothing about whispering wind spells and the like. Yeah. Um. Iomade has not revealed is to me such city? things. How big is this city anyway? What's the population? It's a metropolis, so it's one of the largest cities in uh, Galarian. Okay. Let me get you some better numbers here. Murder capital of the world. No, no, it's very specifically not the murder capital of the world. All right. <laughs> not technically. Uh, when you're found floating face down in the bay near the Jade Quarter, they call that origami. Because you've been folded. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Wow. Okay, uh, it's a metropolis. It has seventy-two thousand people. Wow. Its population is ninety percent humans. Six Remind me that when we're doing our faction journal goals at the end of this. Okay. Because I think I just got one. Which oh is... yeah, exchange. Yeah. Yeah. I think that this one. is going on an exchange character. All right. Yeah, that one. Now the trick about that is you just knock those out hey, as you're going to hey, those. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Yeah, yeah, we're going sideways. We're going sideways. Yeah. Um, we're talking to Shalilu. I short of further hiring more security of our own, I don't know what to do. Um, maybe with the first person who tries to kill a Meku who dies horribly, it'll discourage some of the others. She's like, Yeah, that'll work. He says, what we need is obviously a very cunning and elaborate plan to disguise our caravans leaving. Maybe two or three different caravans leaving at the same time. I'm not all sure. Go all or going in different directions? Yeah, of course. I like that. If I'd been part of this conversation, that was one of the things I was going to suggest. But I'm Do you, not. like, walk over during this? If I had been invited, puff, 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 and then he stomps his feet <laughs> off into the corner. 
No, no. So, like, I think he hears her, like, starting to get very loud about, you know, having multiple caravans. And he probably walks over because he had a very similar idea. You know? So you introduce yourself into the conversation. I think half the caravan heard. Yeah, it certainly seems like making an example of any threats would would do nothing but benefit us. Well, now that this is a tactics meeting. It would certainly be a good start. I'm a lot less worried about stuff happening here in town than I am about stuff happening once we get out on the road. And uh, I think that um, leaving the si- having the signs leave with someone else and have a couple other caravans leave at the same time or have our camp not be here when we say we're leaving town or something along that would be... Uh, I think I'll insert myself into the conversation now and just say, yes, and while we are still in town, we have the frozen shadow to worry about. They are mercenaries of the worst stripe. They will take whatever currency they are provided. And they are ninja. Everyone so, in the party has already heard that story, though. Although, except for recall, Shalalev, he never actually said that they were mercenaries. They work for people, though. No, we don't know that. He never said any of that, either. We know they're crazy killers, and they live in a secret place that one dude thinks is in the city, and one dude thinks is in a crazy secret castle. Organized criminals usually aren't mercenaries. And they're protecting some business interest. But all that really matters is there one group of powerful people that may oppose us and want to kill us. Which, again, is just in, one of many. While we so, are yeah, I agree. The city. Um, I, think, I, think, I think, and I'm just saying that because I also need to go on break very shortly. But I think that's a good point to stop at when you say that, like commercial break hits. They're like, and there are very powerful people who want to kill us. Boom. <laughs> and then like a Coca-Cola ad rolls. Um, this might be a slightly longer break than normal here, guys. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah product place in the Coke tonight. Vanilla Coke Zero, baby. Yeah, next level right there. I can hey, support our Coke usual Zero? sponsor, not to be undersold, water. Water. Hmm. water. <laughs> Which, Excellent. actually, this cup is going to be filled with water soon. Uh, 